Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Sir Smiles, here. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, it's Sunday, I'm at work. I had to work 3 to 11 a day, so I brought my camera and little setup and stuff with me so I could try to get um, a video done today. I, um, I have wanted to do a video about um, some stuff that's been going on in the world, but then I actually, uh, somehow, I don't know why this came across my feed, but I, um, on YouTube, I watched that HBO full documentary that they did you know, titled On the Record with, pretty much it's about the Russell Simmons rape and um, sexual harassment allegations that happened from the mid to late 80s to the early 2000s, I guess. Um, and it really just kind of left me feeling kind of raw and um, anyway, so I'll, I'll give you guys a little in case you haven't seen it yet, um, it pretty much focuses on this lady, Drew Dixon, really tall, beautiful, light-skinned black lady that worked with Russell Simmons at Def Jam. And man, she seemed like she was like really had a good eye for talent in the music slash hip-hop genre. Um, she put together amazing, amazing um, albums and tracks like the fucking um, Mary J and Method Man, You're All I Need. Like, anybody that's ever heard that song, like, to realize that this lady was instrumental in putting Method Man and Mary J together. Like, how how do you even know this until you heard it, that they actually went together like that, you know, which was really, really dope. To, and then how they kind of sampled the Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, yeah, all I need and just, man, just bomb, bomb. But um, she speaks about how she worked with Russell Simmons for years and how he had basically harassed her in the office and in um, at clubs down to his apartment where he uh, would try to make out, force her to make out with him. And He, she was able to evade it for a while, it seemed like, until one night he got her up to his apartment under the guise of knowing that she would want to listen to a demo that he didn't even fucking have. Like, how do you, you get this lady in your apartment under the guise of listening to a CD that never even really existed and you rape her? Like, it... It, it's it's horrible. I don't want to ruin it too much for you guys because it it actually is worth giving a a listen and a watch to it. And to I've actually watched it so far right now. And like, I've watched it twice, and I'm halfway through watching it again. Just just because it's I, I find it important to talk about things like this so that they won't happen again you know and it's it's important for women and men to to share their stories i think because you never know who you could save and the fact that russell was able to not just even do this to to this lady um drew dixon but in this one documentary, it was at least five females 
that came forward and spoke about him harassing them and even raping them. And then he got to not only make money over the years, but also have this standing in society as um, a peace-loving man when in actuality, no, man, you fucking violent, dog. Like, even, even if you say you never hit any of these ladies or anyone ever in your life, you say you never physically hit them, but to take something so sacred for, from someone is, is violent, if you think about it. And like I said, it's just important to discuss these things because it can maybe help somebody else notice where these signs and symptoms can lead to. So, um, and actually, it wasn't even just Russell, I think, that they spoke about in this documentary. But, um, so, I, I did some thinking and I said, you know, it, it, it's dope for these women to stand together and then come out to um, tell their story. So, I said, okay, let me take a, um, a cue from these ladies. So, I'm sorry, if you are, this is my first, your first time seeing my face on your screen. Like I said, I'm Sir Smiles. I am a 39 year old African American trans man. And I only been transitioning two and a half years to now. But up until two and a half years ago, I identified as a lesbian. I've always been a very um, tomboyish, what we used to call it back in the day, or a very butch female, and now trans man. So I've always been manly. And in 1999, I joined Job Corps um, because I wanted to get away for a while and I was able to join job for and I studied carpentry and I received my GED and then you know later ultimately I went to school to um, become a surgical nurse in, in the OR which I've been here now about 11 and a half years so while I was in job court I um, I had, a, I had a girlfriend that was there to, that I met actually in Job for. But one evening I was, I was the dorm captain and I've always not being cocky or anything, but I've always been fairly attractive. So, and I've always been a lesbian and I came out the closet as at 14 year oh yeah about 13 14 but everybody said they already knew that I was probably gay because I was always I was always a tomboy right but um so I started outwardly dating females even though um I never really had like a serious boyfriend anything you know like in school fifth sixth grade you got a little boyfriend girlfriends at school or whatever um so i had i had like a couple little boyfriends at school but never to the point where we were sexually active or anything um so in job corps i i had a girlfriend and i won't really disclose her name even though it probably wouldn't matter but I haven't talked to her in over 20 years but so I was dorm captain and and job course basically kind of set up like college 
So I, my job was I would go through in the evening and that in the mornings to make sure the rooms were clean, beds were made, trash was up, all the chores, the um, basically like the shower, the bathroom, everything was clean and tidy, right? So this one evening, and I knew that there were, I had a couple ladies there that, you know, would flirt with me. I probably would flirt with, even though I had a, I had a girlfriend and stuff. But this one evening, no, wait, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit. So at this point, I had been in job for maybe like two and a half months or so. And the the young lady that I was in a relationship with, we had been together probably about two months. Cause as soon as I got there, like um, it was like like that um, with women, me chasing and them chasing me, right? So um, I had never really been. Uh, sexually maybe attracted to white girls not that at, at this point i had never been with a white girl right so um but and if you anybody that knows me knows i'm five one five two maybe on a good day i might can hit five three on a on a good day but i'm a little vertically challenged i'll say right but and I, I was about maybe, um, let's say, 145 pounds, stoking, right? Now, I knew that it was it was this white this white girl there that um, you know she would flirt with me here and there or whatever, and I would smile at her, and you know we'd have conversations or whatever, but it was nothing like I was really trying to sexually be with her right so this one evening i go in to um you know check and make sure her and her roommate's room was in order and i remember walking at, and this happened in 1999 so 21 years ago and i can remember it like it was last week i walked into her dorm room and it was two beds well two sets of bunk beds one was by the window and one was on the other side of the dresser i remember entering into the room speaking and the roommate got up and walked out and um the next thing you know i'm going around checking the trash can and the, not that I'm trying to make this about race, but just to maybe be descriptive. So the, the white girl, which she had to be maybe 5'11", which was a lot, a lot taller than me. And she was maybe 210 pounds, right? So she actually walks up on me and grabs me. And I'm like, uh, let's see let let's call her let's call her susan right so i'm like oh susan stop playing real um i'm just staying here i'm gonna be out in a second just you know just give me a minute and she's like no come here come here and, she, and she's like grabbing on me and kind of tugging on my shorts right and i'm like ho oh, oh, ho stop stop playing stop playing my girlfriend is literally in the hall calling my name because we were gonna go smoke a cigarette after I've you know finished checking the rooms and stuff and um I'm like yo stop stop playing stop stop playing Susan stop playing stop playing and she overpowers me a little bit it not a little bit actually a lot I'm I'm sorry it's it, it's kind of uncomfortable talking about this but um she was able to tussle my shorts down and I had a, I had on a pair of swimming trunks with a pair of, of boxers and um, she got my swimming trunks 
around like my my knees and she grabbed my legs and held, held me down while she forced herself on on me with um I, I guess I can't call it giving fellatio because I didn't have a phallus but um she forced herself giving giving me um head and it was like I, I didn't want to really scream because then um somebody probably would have would have heard it and then it would have just been it really had gotten out of out of hand maybe even though it was a violation but like how do you explain to someone that um and then it really didn't make sense because it's like, why would you want to, I don't know, I guess I felt like people probably would not have believed that I didn't want it because it wasn't like she forced me to have sex with her, but she, it, she forced I don't know, I guess people would look at it like, why would you not want that type of pleasure? But if you don't want it, you don't want it. And no shit means no, and stop should mean fucking stop. But I just did, I didn't make like a really big deal about it. But the other thing that occurred to me as I, when she finally got off of me after I had to fake like I had an orgasm because she would like literally she had her arms wrapped up under my hips and um, she wasn't letting up so I, I kind of faked like I had an orgasm in order to get her off of me and then and then she had the audacity after I pull my pants up to try to kiss me and I'm like yeah like like dude no why would you think that this was remotely acceptable and as I finally got made my way to the door I realized because the the actual dorm bedroom doors didn't lock but her roommate was holding the fucking door the whole time so it occurred to me later that this was something that they had actually planned. Believe believe it or not, it like why would you want to I don't know, I, I guess when you don't think that way you you don't seem to think that you wouldn't expect other people's brains to function that way either so um wow this was not really the video i decided i was gonna make today but i think in in order for things like this to maybe stop happening and to no longer happen i think the shame that the victims feel and that you live with needs to be put on the person that should wear the shame which is the person that violates you or them so um i don't know i hope that maybe this helps help someone and maybe it'll help me too in other words you guys enjoy the rest of your sunday night um like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever. Uh, you guys just have a blessed one. And let's start taking better care of each other and ourselves. Peace.